Your best friend has successfully made it to Mars from one of Elon Musk's Falcon 9s. You give him a call to see if he's okay. He instantly hears the message and replies to you. Yes, I'm okay, brother. Thank you for checking in. However, you don't get this reply. For the next 10 minutes, you grow very concerned. Five minutes later, your nerves ease as you hear the reply. Yes, I'm okay, brother. Thank you for checking. You reply, what took you so long to answer, man? I was panicking. He immediately replies, you f an idiot, don't you know that the present is just an illusion? While I could hear you instantly, it'll take you a quarter of an hour to get the message, and that quarter of an hour is neither past nor future to the moment you replied to me. You wait a whole 15 minutes just to hear your friend call you a f***ing idiot and some other complicated shit that you don't really comprehend. You reply, whatever man, just bring me back some cool rocks or something. Confused? Don't worry, let me break it down for you so easy that your grandma could understand, so easy that your uncle get- N never mind, I don't, I don't really want to talk about um, Uncle Gary. You see, the theories of Newton and Maxwell seem to contradict one another in a very subtle way. Maxwell's equations determine the velocity of light. However, Newton's mechanics are not compatible with the existence of a fundamental velocity, since acceleration enters Newton's equations, not velocity. According to Newton's physics, velocity can only be a velocity of something with respect to another. Now, Galileo emphasized that Earth moves with respect to the Sun, even if we do not perceive this movement. This is because we normally term velocity as velocity with respect to Earth. Hence, velocity is a relative concept. In other words, the velocity of an object by itself means absolutely nothing. However, if this is the case, then the speed of light determined by Maxwell's equations is velocity with respect to what? A possibility is that there is a kind of universal substratum in relation to which light moves and has its speed, although the predictions of Maxwell's theory seem independent of this. All attempts to measure the speed of Earth with respect to this hypothetical substratum all failed at the end of the 19th century. Einstein claims that he was not put on the right track by any experiments, rather by reflecting on this apparent contradiction between Maxwell's equations and Newton's mechanics. And so he asked himself if there was somehow a way to render Newton and Galileo's core discoveries and Maxwell's theories consistent. And it was within this process that Einstein discovers something truly remarkable. To understand this discovery, think of all the past, present and future events with respect to the moment you are watching this video right now, and imagine them as a figure like the one you see on the screen. Well, Einstein's discovery is essentially that the diagram on the screen is incorrect. In reality, things are actually as shown in this diagram here. This is the structure of space-time for any observer. That extended present zone you see is the intermediate zone between the past and future. In other words, between the past and future of an event, such as the past and future for you watching this video, there exists an intermediate zone, aka an extended present. This zone is neither past nor future. This is the discovery created with special relativity. Now. The duration of this intermediate zone is extremely small and depends on where an event takes place relative to where you are. Just as you see in the diagram, the greater the distance from you, the greater the duration of the extended present. The distance, just a few meters away from your nose, is only a few nanoseconds, which is near nothing, at least to human perception. The number of nanoseconds in a second is equivalent to the amount of seconds in 30 whole years. Yeah, definitely not much. On the other side of the ocean, the the duration of the intermediate zone is only about a thousandth of a second, still well below our perception of time. On the other hand, the duration of this intermediate zone on the moon is about a few seconds, which can be perceived. On Mars, it is about a quarter of an hour, just like our friend at the start of the video experienced. Therefore, we could say that there are events on Mars that both already happened and events that are yet to even happen. There is a quarter of an hour of events during which things that occur are neither past nor future for us on Earth. That's why it's impossible to hold a smooth conversation with somebody who is on Mars. While they instantly will get our message, their reply won't arrive for another 15 minutes for us. Again, we are not normally aware of this because the discrepancies on Earth are far too small to notice with human perception. Therefore, it makes no sense to say of an event on Mars that took place just now, because just now does not exist. In more technical terms, we say that Einstein has understood that absolute simultaneity does not exist. There is not a single collection of events in the universe that exists now. So that means now does not exist. When you say something happened just now, in reality, that doesn't make any sense. 
But of course, since the discrepancies on Earth are so small, you could get away with saying that anyway. With that said though, I hope you found this intriguing. If so, you can feel free to share it with a friend, especially if they're drunk, their mind will really be blown. Subscribe and enable post notifications for more thought-provoking content like this, and feel free to leave a like. While this is a very basic concept of physics, I did particularly like the way Carlo Rovelli explained it in his book, Reality is Not What It Seems, as well as The Order of Time. Both are really great reads, and examples that he uses really helped me put these into layman's terms for you guys. I'll leave the links for both books in the description if you happen to be interested, but with that said, have a fantastic rest of your day.